Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Liam Douglas here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the brand new Fujifilm X100 VI. But before we get into the specs and the information on this new camera, let's go ahead and roll the intro. So today is February 20th as I'm filming this, and today was the day that Fujifilm held their X Summit in Tokyo, Japan. Now the X Summit started at 12.30 a.m. last night, Eastern Time, going into early February 20th. And the big announcement, of course, was the X100 VI or the X106. Now, just to be honest, I don't have the X100 VI. This is my X100V, so I just have this here for display and demonstration purposes. So let's talk about the changes that Fuji made in the X100 VI. So the overall form factor stayed exactly the same as it is for the X100 V. It's the same second generation 23 millimeter f2 lens with the leaf shutter. It is the exact same form factor although the new body is about two millimeters thicker so it's not really easy to tell and it's about 43 grams heavier if I remember correctly. But the buttons and dials on the top stayed the same, the controls on the front stayed the same. However, the lever on the front for the switch between the EVF and OVF does not have red paint on it like it does on the V. So it's just plain silver. So that'd be an easy way to tell the two cameras apart from a little bit of a distance. Now, all the buttons and controls on the back are exactly the same. Still no D-pad. You do have the joystick and the other buttons on the back as well. And the EVF did stay the same as far as resolution. However, on the X100 VI, it does tilt down a bit further. The V maxes out at a 30 degree tilt where the VI can do 45 degree tilt. Now, all of the ports on the camera stayed the same. The focus selector switch on the side is the same. The charging and micro HDMI on this side are exactly the same. And the battery door and the battery are exactly the same. It's still using the NP126S battery, just like all of the previous X100 models. Now, I know some people are going to be disappointed by that, but if you thought they were going to use the NP235 like they have in the XH and the XT bodies, you were deluding yourselves because they would have had to made the body considerably larger and it would have totally destroyed the design of this sleek and compact street photography camera. Um, they did still go with the UHS-1 card slot. I'm not sure why they didn't upgrade it to a UHS-2. But let's talk now about the changes in the new body. So the new body has the newer 40.2 megapixel X-Trans 5 sensor that was first introduced in the X-H2 and then also in the X-T5. And it also has the same X-Processor 5 to give you faster, more capable autofocus with the deep learning and all of that good stuff. They do now also offer in the menus uh, bird tracking, uh, other animal tracking, dogs, cats, birds, planes, trains, cars, all that good stuff. Um, so those improvements are there as well. Now with the new processor, they did also include a couple of new film simulations. They added the Riala Ace as well as the Nostalgic Negative, which we had already seen in the GFX 100 Mark II. So no brand new film simulations, just the newer film simulations from the X1, uh, the GFX 102, trickling down to the X106. Now, in addition to the processor and the CMOS sensor, or the X-Tran sensor, excuse me, being upgraded in the new body, they did also add five-axis in-body image stabilization, or IBIS, which Fuji says is capable of reducing up to six stops of handshake if you're hand-holding the camera trying to do lower shutter speeds, and for much smoother video shooting as well. Additionally, the new camera 
because of the new sensor and processor is also capable of 6.2K video at 30p, although there is a 1.25 crop, I believe. And it does also have 4K HQ video, again with a 1.25 crop. And then standard 4K video 60 as well, without a crop. And 1080p video at up to 240 frames per second for super slow-mo video. Now, those are the real changes in the X100VI versus the X100V. The new camera is also no longer produced in Japan. The new camera is going to be manufactured at a new factory that Fuji just opened recently in China. So all of the VIs or sixes, whatever you want to call them, will be manufactured in China. Hopefully it will allow Fuji, Fuji to be able to produce them faster and meet demand much better than they could with the X100V. They finally had to stop taking orders for the V because they just couldn't keep up anymore. They were like three months behind. A lot of that was due to the TikTok craze over this camera and the X100 line in general. So hopefully we'll be getting better production numbers of the new body so that they'll be able to better meet demand for all the consumers that pre-ordered or want to order or buy one in a store later on down the road. Now, the one thing that's confused me is in some of the Fujifilm groups I'm in on Facebook, I've seen people just outright flaming Fuji and the X100VI, which I don't understand at all. One guy posted a oh, way to waste planetary resources Fuji, which didn't make any sense to me at all. Basically what it boils down to is the camera is not for everybody. The X100 line is not for everybody. If it's not the kind of camera you need, then just shut up and move on and buy something else. You don't need to flame Fujifilm and you don't need to flame the X100 6 just because it doesn't fit your needs. I understand it's a bit of a niche camera, but there are actually a lot of street photographers in the world and we certainly appreciate this sleek form factor compact 35 millimeter full frame equivalent field of view camera for doing street photography. Now, to be honest, as far as if you watch the YouTube videos about the X100V, Fuji did pretty much tick off all the boxes of all the items that aggravated people about the V. You know, the wanting more resolution, wanting IBIS, wanting a better processor. The only thing that Fuji did not accomplish that people were asking for was the bigger battery, which I knew that wasn't going to happen, so I wasn't shocked when it didn't happen because it would totally destroy the design of this sleek and beautiful compact camera. But like I said, there's no need to be flaming people. I mean, getting back to the sensor, I know a lot of people uh, that posted X100V videos, they complained about the 26 megapixels not being enough. I personally think it's enough. I think it's plenty for street photography, but people have said, that made comments like oh well if i got to crop into my shots afterwards you know the image falls apart because there's not enough resolution well you shouldn't be cropping into your images this is a street photography camera if you need to crop in then you should have gotten closer to your subject to begin with by moving closer with your feet or moving farther back whatever the case may be or put on the tcl x100 mark ii teleconversion lens that'll bump it up to 50 uh, 50 millimeters and it up samples your image process uh, your imaging so you don't lose any of the resolution and then you would have a tighter crop with the 50 millimeter full frame field of view but if you're shooting with this camera and complaining that your image is falling apart because you have to crop in tight on the subject and it's only 26 megapixels then you shouldn't be shooting with this camera just being honest you should be shooting with one of their interchangeable lens cameras and using a longer focal length lens like the 50 to 140 28 that i have or the 70 to 300 or whatever the case may be but if you need to do a lot of cropping into your images afterwards then you honestly shouldn't be shooting with this camera this camera is made for wide angle photography it's a wide angle lens and it is absolutely perfect and stellar for what it's made for and that is street photography as i said from the beginning now will i be upgrading myself absolutely not i don't have anything against the bi it just doesn't offer anything that would compel me to sell my x100 which i already have and upgrade to the x100 vi i don't need the 40 megapixel sensor as i mentioned a moment ago 26 is plenty for street yeah the the fifth generation processor would be nice to have for the better autofocus it's not a deal breaker for me and neither is the ibis because i don't shoot any video with this camera 
and I don't use super slow shutter speeds, so I don't need that either. It would have been more compelling to me, would have been if they would have released the X100VI with the new stacked 26 megapixel sensor from the XH2S and the fifth generation processor, then I would have seriously wanted to upgrade and sell this one off to get the new one. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the new camera is $200 more expensive. The new camera retails for $1599 US, where the X100V retailed for $1399 when that first came out four years ago. So you do have a $200 increase in price and more than likely that's due to the, the higher megapixel sensor and the IBIS being uh, installed in the new body. So it's going to raise the cost of materials and so on and so forth. Not research and development because they already covered that with the X-H2 and the X-T5, but definitely, you know, the higher megapixel sensor and the IBIS is going to increase the cost of the camera. So there you have it. If you're okay with paying the extra $200, great. If you're not, move on and buy something else. With any luck, if they're able to meet demand with the X106 using the new factory in China's production capabilities, then hopefully the price on these on the used market on the Vs will start going down considerably. And then you should be able to realistically pick an X100V up in nice condition for around $800, but we'll have to wait and see how the market bears it out. All right, that is going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch it. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it out on social media, comment down below. Your comments are always welcome, and I will see you next time.